In today's morning meds, we'll talk all about premarital sex and what our view should be as Christians. So if you're ready, then let's go. truth about premarital sex? Do I know what the Bible says about premarital sex? What am I willing to change in my life to make room for God's work within me? You can also find these questions in the description box. Good morning. Good morning and welcome back to Morning Meds where we meditate on God's word in order to tackle everyday issues that we face as Christians. And if you like what you see on Morning Meds, be sure to like, subscribe, as well as share so that we can make it through this life together with the help of God. So God created sex as a spiritual experience. He created it as an experience to be had between married individuals. To God, sex means marriage, but the world we live in has morphed sex into a free-for-all to everyone who wants to and likes to. Where sex was once believed to be beautiful and sacred, we've now degraded it to a body count and a comparison of the sexes. Women living to compete with their male counterparts just to prove the nothingness of the action we even come up with our own terminology. Girl, you gotta live while you can. Oh, you single. Girl, you do what you gotta do. We say all these things to prove just how little sex means. But the moment we get married, we try to make sex the ultimate decision maker between staying in a marriage and leaving a marriage. It doesn't make sense. And because our citizenship is in heaven and not on earth, we cannot fall into the practices of what we see going on around us, no matter how tempting it may be. The word of God makes the decisions for Christians. God has always, since Adam and Eve, intended for his children to be set apart for his glorification, for his purpose. Ephesians 2 and 10 says that we are his workmanship. And the only way that we appear different to the world is through our belief in Jesus Christ and through our actions. The word of God says that just because one can do a thing doesn't mean that one should do that thing. The body is not meant for sexual freedom, but for the Lord. If you are a Christian and you believe in the blood of Jesus, you must, if you are participating, stop having premarital sex. I get it, okay? We have trained ourselves to believe that we have control of our own lives and that we need to have sex. But as Christians, we believe that our lives are not our own. We believe that we are stewards of God's stuff, God's body, God's kids, God's house. With that belief, we must allow God's Holy Spirit to raise us up to a level of total submission to God and his word in mind, spirit, and body. Romans 8 and 26 says, Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what to pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God. We thank you so much for who you are and how you are. Lord, we trust your word and we believe your plan, God. We ask you, God, to forgive us for the wrong that we've done, Lord. We ask you, God, to free us from the condemnation and the guilt of premarital sex and that, that feeling that we failed you and that there's no coming back from it. We ask you, God, to uh, free us from that thought and we rebuke that in the name of Jesus. Lord, we know that when we turn and we come to you, 
you open, you receive us with open arms and with warmth and with peace that surpasses all understanding. You do not hold these things against us when we decide to turn and come back toward you. We ask you, Lord God, to give us the strength to make the change. Give us the courage to make the change. Even if we didn't know, and now that we do, we ask you, God, to give us the strength to make the change. We love you, God. Keep us forever in your care. Bless every household represented in Christ Jesus' name I pray. Amen.